Hey guys, welcome back to Massive Chalice. Last episode we were trying to build this guild, the Sage Rides Guild, so that we can research things more quickly. Uh, we had these people down here adopt a baby, and these people had a baby on their own via magical, natural uh, events. And we still we still haven't finished building this place. We, we had a choice to either defend this location or this location from an attack. And I chose to defend the currently built Sage Rats Guild because it, ser it serves a purpose that I don't currently have on the board yet, so I want to get it out there already. But as a result, the first of these three slots was filled in on this guy, so presumably when you lose all three of them, you lose that tile forever. And it's, that, it really is going to feel like a race against the clock to get through the 300 days. I assume, I, my, my take on this is that the, the degradation of these outer pieces of the kingdom are basically the equivalent of losing countries in XCOM and it being like, oh, you don't have resources now because you're losing all of these countries forever because you can you can make positive and negative progress with each country, but you can but once they're gone, they're gone forever, which seems to be the same concept. Anyway, now it's time to fast forward time. We have five we have almost six years to go, well less now, trying to get that uh that guild finished. And they might give us the time this time. Alright. Research complete. A new Sage Rites Guild has been built. Remember, Sage Rites forsake combat for their pursuit of knowledge, and your hero's intuition will greatly influence their rate of research. So obviously, a ah, good... Sage Rites Guild. I was always jealous of those in my class who went on to join their ranks. They ended up designing the rotary trebuchet that's still used in keeps to this day, as well as the first Oakenstone crossbow. First time I went to one, I came in for an armor fitting, and by the end, both of my arms were on fire. <laughs> what a bunch of brilliant scamps they are. I mean, that's one word for the being set on fire thing. Okay, so it looks like you can put three sage rites here. They will eventually die, just like anyone else does. Uh, but they increase our research bonus. We get our intuition score. Highest one is 11. These characters that are listed as vanguards are my characters that uh, are in my current squad for combat. So naturally I would want to go after the guy with the highest intuition. Slightly concerning. Uh, no, actually I have a lot of males. Okay, I'm ha I'm g I have two young girls currently being raised in the two keeps I have, so I was concerned that I might get too many girls and not enough guys, but I actually still have a lot of males, so using this guy wouldn't be a bad idea. Just what it, it's just, is he, a, is he better in combat? Arth okay, so he's he's old now, isn't he? I don't know, he has arthritis, reduced accuracy and speed in later years. Decreased dexterity, decrease. oh, yeah, he's he's already old at 48, but he also has decreased experience gain, so he's not gonna be great for, uh... He's not gonna be great for getting any more powerful, either. He has increased intuition, though, the highest we can get, practically. It is concerning that he is my other alchemist. Let's see. Prime aged, increased hit points and strength, plus intelligence. The main concern I have here is that I believe he's my only alchemist that's not the one I'm- Oh, there's- yeah, the only alchemist is the one that I have in combat right now. Like, I'm wondering what happens if I run out of alchemists. Do I just lose the class? Like, do- do the people you breed o Are the people you breed always based on the children? I guess that's- I guess that's not true because you can adopt people, so the people I adopt could be alchemists. Or the people that I find magically. So, I think I'm gonna go with this guy just for the best bo the best uh, bonus. Let's give it a shot. Sage Red induction. Indu induction to the Sage Red's Guild is an honor and committed on the of the highest order. And commitment of the highest order, a Sage Red must break ties with family, house, and relics. Only death may escort a Sage Red from study. Are you sure you wish to induct uh, Graham von Klauswitz into the Sage Red's Guild? Yes, I will. First of many, I hope. The thrills of battle are a hard thing to leave, but I always found the thrills of inquiry and invention to be worthy substitutes. Just don't get carried away with appointments. Sage rites can never return to battle. And last I checked, we still need heroes to win this war. That is exactly the balance we have to find here. You see, putting these guys in... Oh, his, in his intuition increased from 11 to 13 when I placed him in there. That's cool. So he has 13 intuition, which gives us a total research bonus of 13%, which I assume means that all forms of research now happen 13% faster, is I assume what they're just saying there. So getting Sage Rites is good. The concern, of course, is that I need soldiers to do my fighting. I might throw in a second person still, though. Let's see. 
Let's sort by classes really quick to see how many I have of each. I have my alchemist. One, two, three, four, five. I have four caverjacks. And four hunters because I married two of them away last time. Let's see who has the highest intuition out of my caberjacks, for example. Uh, okay, so the best option is actually this hunter. What kind of details do they have? Do, do I care if I loot, use them up? Increased intelligence, dexterity, optimistic. So the, oh, this is the person that gives me false impressions of how... Huh. I think this person... Yeah, this person's old. Increased intuition. I think it's good to... I think this is the ideal person to put in this organization. They're already old, which means they get a bonus to intuition, so they're more useful at the research station. And they're also... A low-level old character, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, well, they're not going to have time to learn to become more powerful and level up more because they're already old. So the best they can do is probably use their high intuition here at this guild. This seems like the pl this entire organization is probably where I will retire my uh, old heroes that have been around for a long time but have now gotten much older but have intuition to spare. So we have two people in the guild now for a total research bo bonus of 24%. We'll see. We still haven't learned exactly when people die age-wise. It's probably a it's probably a range. It's probably a dice roll every time someone gets older. But anyway, we built our, we successfully built our Sage Rights Guild. If I want to make another one, it'll take me 17, almost 18 years, and I don't necessarily need to yet because I haven't even I haven't even made uh, I haven't even filled up the current one yet. So the question is, what do I want to emphasize next? first thing that comes to mind, really, is the fact that, uh, crossbows are super effective so far on my team, so the idea of making them more strong, more powerful, seems like worth a worthwhile ability. Let's take a look at this. Crossbows are complicated. Take time to really figure out why it's best to use bear gut for bowstrings instead of the more common cat gut, and you'll discover the whole new world of damage potential. Completing this research reduces the cost of additional advanced training. So it reduces the cost of advanced training. I don't think we've I don't think we've learned how to do advanced training yet though. Is that what the crucible's for? Their training regiments will be dispersed nationwide and they will pass on some of their own experience and personalities as well. I probably want to make a crucible so I can train people, huh? Okay. First of all, it says armor. Does this also training or is it actually better armor? Refined Caberjack Armor. Caberjacks thrive in the scalding flames of battle. Research better armor will let them fight for even longer. Completing this research will reduce the costs of additional refined armors. Oh. Doing this research... Oh, they're saying that researching this reduces the cost of these armors. And reducing the cost... Doing this training reduces the cost of these advanced trainings. Okay. That's what they're talking about. If, so they're saying if I... I thought it was talking about training as a mechanic in the game somewhere. They're saying if you increase crossbow training, that if you learn this, then you can then do the other weapon trainings more easily. I think I am going to do this. Let's try to get more powerful archers. Hopefully. Why does it say there's exclamation points? Unstable carapace armor. These are the things that I'm in progress in the process of learning how to do. Veil armor. The skin of lapses exhibits some extraordinary illusionary properties. With enough residue collected from their bodies, we could fashion a suit of armor that will improve the stealth abilities of our hunters. Oh, that's interesting. Hunters having better stealth ability. Also, this is totally XCOM once again. Kill specific enemies and gather their parts, and you can get specific equipment from their technology, is how XCOM worked. Uh, get rupture kills to do unstable carapace armor. Ruptures love catching assailants off guard by detonating themselves after they've been killed. We could do them one better by outfitting our alchemist with a volatile armor that triggers when they take any damage at all. So whenever a, uh, an alchemist takes damage, they just explode on people. That sounds interesting. New items. Sponge stone. The seeds seem to leech some of their victims' life force with each annoying headbutt. We're tr certain that it may be possible to imbue a small stone with the ability to steal health from the cadence during combat. Ooh. Giving, a, giving your, uh, your melee characters a health steal ability could keep them more durable. Perilous kill for... 
perilous core for rupture kills with a generous amount of rupture head gems. We believe that we can make their explosive capabilities portable. A self-detonating stone for the risk-prone hero. So you can play a mine, but you can put a mine or a grenade, basically. Experience scarf. Lapses often leave behind a trail of memory fibers. If these strands were woven into a scarf, our heroes could gain experience at an increased rate. That'd be a good way. That'd be that'd be a good way of taking revenge for all the experience they're stealing with from me over the course of the game. Haste hooch. <laughs> That's it's a little it's a little bottle with legs. Apparently, our sage rites have concocted some sort of pep drink to make it through long nights. We believe that after some tinkering, our formula could boost the hero's movement range in battle. Kill t so kill 35 seeds, and we can make people move faster. Interesting. Hero discovery boost. I might want to grab that before I even start discovering heroes. If I want to just immediately start having people that are level 3 instead of 1. Since I assume they're talking about it being level 1. Since it says it increases by 2. Anyway, we've already started crossbow training. Now it's just time to fast forward time until we probably get attacked or something. How old are these children? Those are where the newborn was. They're now 6 years old. Oh, they're level 2. That training is coming along nicely, apparently. He's, he's higher level. This, this character's already higher level than some of the people that started here, honestly. I can't make any decisions, can I? Details. Oh, look, it's a little kid. No special traits. High experience gains. Probably going to be handy for their growth. It's too bad their stats suck. The one at the bottom that we had before is also. This is the adopted child. Oh, we have two kids here. Did they also? They must have. Ha oh, they, they had a kid. This one's, this one's age zero. So they must have just had a child. Uh, the adopted child is age 7, already level 2. Their child is level 1. What's their child like? Slow experience, but high movement. Decreased sight. Okay. And their adopted child... Increased sight, go figure. Increased intelligence, decreased strength. They're Shadow Jack. They're both Shadow Jacks. Okay. Let's go ahead and move forward. Working on that crossbow training, but we're probably going to get attacked before it finishes. We can't decide on what the right move is here. So, we require a third party. Field trip. A teacher would like to bring her class to the capital, so they can learn about how the nation is governed. However, she didn't want to wait for a decision, and now she and her students are standing before you with the most pleading eyes you've ever seen. What do you say? So they... They just showed up at the capital without asking if they could come. That's dangerous. Uh, I could say, of course, but please stay in the throne room, or try the barracks. Our heroes are far more interesting hosts than I am. Let's not send children to the barracks. That sounds dangerous. Go wherever you like. Whatever helps with your education. Oh, uh, giving... Uh, let's see. Do I trust the teacher to just be a proper chaperone? This sounds dangerous. Go wherever you like. Whatever helps through education. Someone's gonna die horribly, aren't they? A day to remember. The students spend all day exploring the nooks and crannies of the capital, with a few kids even getting lost, quote-unquote, in the black archives for half an hour before someone caught them, and are so tired by the end they actually pay, no at they actually pay attention to your talk on managing expectations. Then they have questions. When it's all over, they file out of the throne room, and you hope that today was en as enjoyable for them as it was for you. Oh, hey, everything worked out nice. Hey, I just saw a little baby icon. Now there's three babies down here. They're just spitting kids out. Wow, they're busy. Improving your research by 24%. Yep, that's fine. Let's get that crossbow training done. Go, go, go. Let's not get invaded. Please, maybe. They're late this time. Damn or it. early. It doesn't matter. To battle! Cadence is invading the nation, attempting to drastically increase corruption in our lands. Pick a region to defend. Let's see. So d down here, there's one of the. Oh crap! What did I do? No, cancel, cancel! I didn't mean to click on it. I was trying to look at the thing, and the other waypoint got in the way. The the uh the dr this chalice fully charged goal got in the way of me highlighting this thing. No, get out! The I'm trying to highlight this. Territory attack. If I. If I take this one, it'll get me a 25% reduction in my current research time. Which is not... Eh, that's like a year still. But it, no one lives here currently. Meanwhile, this one's on the way to a keep I already have. 
1.5% experience for each enemy killed. Ah, uh, well both of them are not currently occupied locations. This one gives me bonus experience to my current squad, which is good for them, but they're temporary. But research is permanent, so I think I'm gonna side with the research, actually. Let's try to help with the research situation. How you guys doing? Anyone old? Oh, left guy looks old. How you doing, Brandon? Do I give you one more fight before I retire you? Let's look at your details. Oh, he's still prime age. Age 55. Alright, after this fight, he'll probably be considered old. Oh wait, he's young at heart. A youthful outlook prevents the impact of age on stats. So he'll never get old st he'll never get negative effects from being old. He'll just eventually drop dead from being old. So he'll, he'll continue to be a useful melee character. We do have characters to level up right here. So look at the skills in this guy. Did I click on the wrong one? I did. Our alchemist leveled up. Free throw, unlocked at level 2. A quick flask throw that doesn't cost an action point. Absolutely. I assume it works the same way as some other games where this first one you always pick, but then I think you pick either left or right on each of the uh, subsequent levels as you level up, I assume. But obviously I'm gonna grab the first skill. Of course I want a flask throw that doesn't use an action point. That means that you can freaking, uh... That means you can throw and move a, a full turn's worth. Here's our first decision. Because Elastra is our highest level character. Honed hearing allows hearing enemies through obstacles and fog of war up to six tiles away. Detecting people is handy, but I put these guys in the back usually, so I don't know if I'll detect people with that skill if I usually don't want them on the front lines anyway, unless, of course, they're scouting, I guess. Put it down and deal increased damage to injured enemies with less than half health. That also has slightly questionable usefulness, because if they're already low on health, then I'm probably strong enough to just straight up kill them anyway. But at the same time, I suppose I might encounter more difficult enemies later where it will matter more to be able to wipe out what's left of a guy. I think I'm gonna go for put it down. There we go. The XCOM, the XCOM vibes will never stop. That's, that's just another layer on the top of the cake of like, oh yeah, everyone has like, eh, like four, like four tiers of skills and you pick one or the other each time you level up. <laughs> That's fine, XCOM's a great game, so I'm cool with other games sort of doing that. Although they, they, they did just announce XCOM 2 is coming out, so that's gonna be something I have, I'll have to play on here for sure. Bulwarks produce a nigh impenetrable bone shell every time they attack. Get in a solid hit, then stun or fuck. Hero messed up the landing there, not a good sign. Quiet. I wonder if they specifically do somewhat condescending messages right now because all my characters are low level. And maybe when they level up, they'll get they'll get less condescending stuff. Wait, there's three people here. Where's the rest of the crew? Oh, they're over here on the bridge. Our party's split up. Interesting. Slightly rough that I don't get any choice on who gets split up where. Alright, I'm gonna go with attacking forward in this direction. Because on this, on this side of the bridge, it's just a big open area that there's clearly a wall here that's the end of the level. So that means it's, it's a defensible position. Meanwhile, this whole area out here, people could be attacking me all the time without me being able to do much about it. So, let's go ahead and go attack this guy in the face, basically. I'm going to attack him from here. I'm going to alter my path to get specifically on that side of him. Low damage. Oh, he tried. It is noticeable that it seems like the uh, ranger, the ranger type characters are specifically very powerful. Let's see. You can't walk here, so if I go right here, I can specifically. Whoops. I can attack this character from that position and and block them from moving forward. I assume. Please kill. Still not a kill, but okay. That'll that'll hold that guy in position. Which means that I can use my all my damaging characters to focus fire this guy to make sure he goes down, which seems like a worthwhile approach to me. Don't want to stand near him, because I'll, I'll, he'll make me knock back. Alright, 10 to 13 damage. I can use follow-up to do more damage. Which, this should- this, this actually has a good chance of killing. Oh, and it missed. Okay. 
I don't want to throw a grenade this early on since these are easy to kill targets. And if I move here, I can shoot. So if, I'll, if I'm lucky, this high level, this is the high level character, right? Yeah, that's Alastra. There's a good chance that she'll be able to hit from here. 100%. Oh wow, one shot. 20 to 24 damage, she's comically strong. Taking dudes out. Oh, did that hit them? Or is she still at full health? I think she's still at full health. What's your maximum? Your hit points is 14, so you're still at full health. Okay. I was worried that the shockwave might have hit them. Alright, progress was made. Keep moving forward just in case something runs up behind us, basically. I can make other decisions afterwards. I just want to make sure I don't specifically get them trapped. I I'm willing to let this guy survive long enough to hit me afterwards just because he doesn't have his negative of, of effects afterwards. And once the once this side of the bridge is wiped out, I can regroup my party and, mo and move as a unit better. You really want to approach Alastra? That's the approach you're going to make here? Because I can ruin you. I can shoot you twice in a row. You're, you're screwed. Don't approach me. Do you know who I am? Well, now you won't know who I am because you're dead. Alastra's a badass. The problem is, of course, uh, you get experience on kills, so she's, she's hogging up a bunch of experience and she's totally going to flounder it. It's going to be tough watching her age and become less useful for that reason. Uh, first of all, why do you guys never do damage? It says 15 to 7 to, to 19 damage, but I feel like I've been attacking with these characters all day long and they never seem to do actual damage. They always do glancing blows. Come on, please land a blow. There you go, you did it. Took long enough. Oh, you leveled right that just like that. I specifically gave that kill to my melee characters to avoid uh giving all the experience to my ranged characters. Let's just move to block the path. I'm gonna just move south, I think, at this point. I think I like the idea of having my crew closer together instead of spread out over this weird bridge. There we go. This is actually a super defensible position because uh, archers have good range and they can per they can hang out over on these little spots here and just shoot at people from a distance. Unfortunately, the AI doesn't seem very interested in attacking me. They seem to be perfectly content to just hang out in the background somewhere instead of attacking me directly, which makes this a little more problematic. I'm going to go ahead and use this guy's bait to try to notice an enemy. There's one. So is there anywhere I can move that'll put me in attack range? Not in my... oop. So if I put her in attack range, then she's not going to be... Let's see. I don't think I can shoot them unless I go... Unless I sprint. Yeah, I have to sprint, which means I can't shoot this turn. Okay. We'll move in there. Spread out our characters a little bit for, for some extended line of sight. Any, any other enemies discovered as a result of that move? There's just that one. Okay. Moving our characters up. I'll go... I'll pro I'm probably gonna go north a little bit across this bridge with the melee character. Oh wait, no, there's a pit there, so never mind. Okay, we'll figure it out. Uh, this is my alchemist. Who does need to get some kills. They're only level two. I need to try to level these guys a little evenly, because Alastra is such an easy to... Oh, don't take her experience. Damn, 150. That's that's severe. Let's see if I can get... Is that my other ranged character? Wow, she's really far back. So I can't attack from any of these positions? I'll just, I'll just have to move forward then. Discover anyone new? Nope. I could try to melee this guy for 15 to 19 damage. Do I trust the ability for this to work? Oh, the problem is it'll do an AoE that stuns me. Yeah, that's concerning. I don't want to melee that character because it'll do an AoE that'll take me out of commission. I can't move anywhere in this area that'll let me throw stuff at them. I have to just move out further. Let's just get a move in then. Alas, just probably just gonna have to take this character out so they don't keep sapping experience for my team. Oh, I can't. I can't use follow up though, so. I just have to hope that this one gets 16. Which it, which it didn't. Okay, maybe my melee character can... 
If I use knockback on this character, then the kill... If I, if I use knockback, the kill should knock them away, hopefully, from hitting me. Can I use knockback from... See, I'll click on him here. Try to take an alternate path so that they can actually... Yeah, there we go. That, that way there's not a tree in the way to, from the, the knockback and they'll actually get knocked away. Hopefully the knockback actually works. Please knock them back. Bam! That didn't knock them back. Glancing blow. Damn it. That was ineffective. Are you the only person left? Yes, you are. And you can't do much. Okay. Just push for to the forward of the team. There's a bad guy. That gives my other archer or my alchemist a target for sure. Oh, he can make it all the way up here. Oh, well then I'm just gonna punch you back then. Dick. Oh, that was a miss. Nothing more satisfying than that character in particular missing because of the experience problem. Alright. Good chance of hitting. Please hit them. There we go. Experience from our melee fighter. My level 3 melee fighter. Let's give this melee fighter another chance to try to beat this guy. Oh. Knockbacks, knockbacks on cooldown. How does charge work again? Straight line to damage the knockback first target you encounter. So if I charge this guy... Will it damage them enough to actually kill them? I can't charge in this direction? And if I go this way, I probably won't hit them. Huh. Maybe I should just take the stun. I think I'm just gonna hit this guy and take the stun effect anyway. Just so I, at least I can, uh... At least if I beat this character and get the experience, I'll, uh... I'll get experience for it, even if it does make me pause for the turn. So he'll be stunned. Oh, no, it didn't stun him. Cool. He's not stunned, and he leveled up. These are all good things. No visible enemies anywhere. Everyone else's turn is over. Oh, no, you guys still have turns. Let's see. I think I want to go down this direction and around. Maybe. No, I can, mo I can move up here. I just, uh, no, it's problematic because these are, these are my ranged characters. I don't want them to be attracting too much attention. Unless I stealth move. Which I can't do anywhere around here, really. I can stealth move over here, basically. Eh, it's forward. Discover anyone new? Any new bad guys? No. I think this might... Over here, this might be the boundary of the level. Not clear. Let's keep the alchemist with the crew. Oh, yeah. So that obstructs people, right? Yeah. I saw the obscured characteristics show up earlier. Let's see. Does the obscured character... Okay, increased ev evasion. Uh, evasion stat? Plus 20. Wow. Wow. So yeah, hanging out in grass makes you very hard to shoot, apparently. I'll keep that in mind for my archers in particular. Let's just move her forward, I guess. She has increased sight, right? I'll move her over here, actually. To help her try to spot someone, which she didn't, unfortunately. Alright. Let's have her stealth move to try to scout. She's hidden. She spotted no one. Okay, how big is the zone? It could it could expand further than I think it does. Can I continue to stealth move until I find an actual target? This one also obscures me. No enemy spotted. That looks like the end of the map potentially. Yeah, that's probably the end of the map right here. But it could it probably continues up this direction. So let's just try to move our char our melee characters up. Since now that now they're falling behind quite a bit. Let's see. I think I'll take this melee character up north to assist my other archer. I think divide and conquer is gonna be the approach I take here. Just to wrap around this island from all directions. Oh, there was a bad guy for the briefest instant. Maybe if I run closer with my if I run closer with my melee character, maybe we'll see them. I'll go into this brush so that I'm at least obstructed. So that if I get attacked, I can be guarded. Oh, there he is. In plain sight. Alright. I can do something with that. Oh man, this zone keeps going down here. Okay. Alchemist, you haven't gotten in an attack for a while, have you? Let's see, you can hit them if you go here. Nope, that's another bad guy. That's someone for my other archer to take out. Okay. You have free throw and throw flask. So if I use free throw, that'll that'll have a cooldown, right? 
Cost no action points. Well, I might as well do that if I can. Because that means I can move around. The question, of course, is am I going to kill my... Oh, my other character is standing so close. This is not going to be an alchemist situation. This is going to have to be uh, shoot this guy in the face with my, with my hunter situation. I'm hiding and I'm obscured. You can't see me. You can't see me. You don't see me. There we go. Maybe my can my alchemist throw all the way to the other guy? He probably can't throw that far, can he? Nope. Alchemist will probably just camp for this turn. Let's get my melee character closer. Because he can reveal people for my archer. Oh, there's a guy I want to not have alive anymore. Okay. Let's get my alchemist behind something. So he doesn't get shot by that character that saps experience from you. If I can I shoot that guy from any of these positions? Not really. I can shoot from here. I can shoot the the uh, I can shoot the little scout guy, but I can't shoot the 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 wraith to the uh, the laps from any position. Oh, there's another one. Her bonus sight is awesome. Okay. Hundred percent chance of hitting. Damage will be way higher than their hit points, so there's no need for special abilities. Why does it say, I, oh, if I move, if I moved there, I could see and shoot everybody. Okay, it's still giving me move characteristics, even though I, I, I clearly can't move there. That guy's down. It's interesting to see 100%. I don't remember if, I feel like games in this genre tend to not give you 100% ever. So that's, that's interesting to have that happen. Kind of refreshing. At some point, if you're just so amazingly better than your opponent, you should be able to just hit them consistently. I think that's not a terrible idea. Let's see, so they're they're completely out of my line of sight, huh? I'd say let's charge in with my melee character then. He can at least try to reveal them from my archers. There they are. Oh, there's a lot of them. That's dangerous now. Okay. If I move here, can I shoot someone? I can shoot the Wraith, awesome. I'm gonna move here and I'm going to follow up shot on the Wraith, just to ensure that it dies, because I could roll less than 16 and not kill with a normal shot. Like that. Nice shockwave on that character. Did not stun them, but still effective. Very nice. Well, these are all melee characters, so I don't have to worry about getting shot now, so the the alchemist can run to their maximum length and be, pr be ready to potentially throw a bomb next round. Although, if they all gather directly on top of my melee character, that won't work. Uh, so I'm going to put my other me melee character in a position where he'll just... Be a, 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 he'll be a target before my other characters are likely to be. And if I move this character here, he can shoot that rogue type character. The seeds. I need to remember their goddamn names. I'm doing really bad about that. 72% chance of hitting. Not as good as the other character because we're like half the level, but maybe I'll get lucky. And then get. And maybe I'll get a level 3 out of the deal. Nope. No, no level 3 this time. Alright, so here comes the. Expected result. Them trying to attack me down. They're low damage characters, though. So they're not very threatening, aside from the fact that if they if they team up, they can become a problem. I'm gonna free throw on this guy. Do it from a distance where I'm like less likely to hit my other character. Oh, it's super concerning that I'm still a little close to that guy. Please don't miss so bad that I hit my guy. Please. Come on. Oh, oh God. Alchemists are scary. <laughs> Alchemists are really scary. <laughs> I don't know if I like alchemists. Maybe it's good that I only have like one. <laughs> this should this will kill if it hits, but it might not hit. We'll see how it goes. It hit. All right. Let's give my melee character a chance to try to fight this guy up close. To hopefully, it, it, yeah, if it hit, if it hits, it'll kill, but it might glance. Come on. There we go. More experience for my melee characters. Oh, that was it. That was the end of the fight. Wow. Watching this was just like seeing the battle at Screed's Gate again. We didn't tell you about that one, did we? I don't believe so. Screed's Gate. House of the Thieves without houses. <laughs> That's a dumb name. House of the Thieves without houses. You made a mistake. Alright, so everyone got kill experience except for our alchemist because I was constantly thinking he was going to murder my entire party. <laughs> oh, figuring out how to, how to use the alchemist properly is going to be interesting. Uh, no one leveled up from the mission experience, but a lot of people leveled up just over the course of the fight. And wow, Alastra... Oh wow, yeah. 
Even though I, I, I kept intentionally not killing people with her to let other people get a chance, but even so, I still had Elastra get 500 kill experience. She learns fast though, doesn't she? So she's just an all-around badass character. <laughs> I have a clear favorite is what I'm getting at. Cadence weapons cannot... That was so fast I couldn't even read it. So it looks like every single attack will always take some of my map away no matter what. That's just part of the rhythm of the game. And it'll just be about choosing which ones I want to prioritize keeping. Research time reduced. Uh, we lost a year and 45 days on crossbow training. Good. I'm so close to finishing it. Uh, let's... Let's finish it the, the, this episode. Come on. Come on, crossbow training. You can do it. I remember the day I finished my training and set off for the capital. There was a lot of crying. Mostly from the kids I crushed during my advanced gouging final. What a day that was. It always arrives faster than one expects. Oh, one of our young people just be hit the age of 15. Makes sense, I'm researching like a 10 year thing, so... Those, those really young people I got, like, last episode are gonna be old enough now. It's weird thinking about the way time passes in this game. Alright, graduation day. When heroes come of age, they are transferred to the capital for active duty. They can be sent to fight the Cadence on tactical missions, or assigned to be Regents, Partners, Sage Rites, or Standards. This is handy, because now I'm getting a proper quantity of, uh... Oh yeah, you can actually see the, uh, the headline. So here are Arwen and Albert. The people that are ruling one of my king my houses and here's a whole group of children they have age two seven and five they're cr so they're creating people quite quickly so i'm gonna have i'm actually gonna be able to stock up on uh sage rights and stuff like that pretty easily then we're getting children faster than i ever expected too so this brand new character is a level two shadow jack it'll be interesting figuring out exactly how a shadow jack works so the, the strong willed and they're, they have decreased movement range. That's unfortunate. They're young, so they have increased dexterity, decreased intelligence and intuition. They're specifically equipped with a, with a caber. Can I replace that with something else if I want to? There's no other items available for to equip at this time. Huh. Wow, caber jack armor. Zero evasion, zero armor. It does nothing. Congratulations. Let's get, might as well get him his starting skill. Whoa! Okay, this is where it changes. It's a caberjack. So a shadow jack is a caberjack that has stealth, apparently. So he just learned stealth. Whoa. It'll be interesting seeing what these other ones are like. Armor knocks back melee attacks. Put it down. Oh yeah. There you go. So one side of the tree is caberjack skills and one side of the tree is uh, hunter skills. So these, these, uh... So the game has immediately has three obvious classes, but kind of has six classes then with that kind of variety. Although they are amalgamations of other characters. Okay, so there's ca there's characters in the capital. So I should have a fair number of people now. Coming of age. How many people exist in these places now? There's one trainee here. Three trainees here. That's a lot of trainees. And I should have a, a nice supply of new heroes, basically. Or that was the first one, huh? Yeah, we'll see how this goes. We're gaining people, that's good. Okay, so let's just get back to the research. I want to finish that this episode. I don't like that the X for leaving the menu is right above your research menu, because it makes me think I'm canceling my research. Alright, come on, no fighting, no fighting, no fighting. Otherwise, that'll be awkward for me trying to do it this episode. There we go. Research complete. It turns out the crossbows aren't just regular bows with, with gears on them. With this knowledge alone, your heroes and techniques have noticeably improved. This should give me a chance to make my crossbow characters dangerous, basically. Elite crossbow training. If I spend 21 years, I can get elite crossbow training. I'll probably want to get more research assistance to make that faster first, but hey! In only five years, I can get my other training done. I probably want to build another keep, though, first, so I can continue to get more characters to, in turn, turn into sage rites and crucible people. Uh, no, actually, no. Obviously, we want, we want a crucible. We need to be training our trainees, so I think that's going to be my pr my top priority right now. All right, so yeah, within a crucible, the hero prompted to be the standard will help boost the experience of our trainees. Their training regimen will be dispersed nationwide, and they will pass on some of their own experience and personalities as well. Cost for building crucibles increases with each construction. Let's go ahead and pick a location for this. 
Any benefits? Caverjack's good bonus strength. That's... Oh, that spot has a keep on it. C local Crucible, training experience. And that's the, sp that's the one I've already defended. So yeah, it might make, make sense to make a local Crucible here. So let's build it here. Alright, so that'll be our next goal, to build towards as we build up our party. I might look into putting another guy here if any of the new people are useful. But, uh, oh cool, research it, research improvement has increased, probably because someone got older. Anyway, thanks for watching guys like always, I'll see you next time as we build this crucible, fight off another attack that will inevitably happen, and deal with our booming baby population apparently.